Containment means to stop the spread of communism. Which country led the charge to try to stop the spread of communism? Rhymes with United Fates. The United States, all right? America wanted to stop the spread of communism. So what we have here, Ms. Lesson, is basically, there are other situations as well where we try to contain the spread of communism, but these are the big ones that you're gonna be responsible for when it comes to June and you take the regions. The Korean War, the Vietnam War, communism in Cuba, communism in Afghanistan. In some of these situations, containment was successful. In some of these situations, not so successful. Okay, so first of all, with the Korean War, even if you didn't have this assigned section, I want us to all understand what this term proxy war is. A proxy war is when you fight another country indirectly. So for example, if there's a group of people in the world that are fighting to spread communism, which country is gonna have their back? Which big country? Soviet Union, right? So if there's a group in the world, whether it's North Korea or North Vietnam, if they're looking to spread communism, communist countries are gonna supply them with weapons and train them, okay? America is gonna say, okay, we don't wanna fight directly, but we'll train and support people who are trying to stop the spread of communism, okay? So we're kind of fighting the Soviet Union indirectly. That's what a proxy war is, okay? We got a situation unfolding like that with Ukraine. Right? We're not attacking Russia directly, but what are we doing? We're helping Ukrainians have supplies so that they can fight the Russians. Okay? The, the, the war in Ukraine is kind of like an example of a proxy war to some extent as well. So the Korean War was just that. Okay? After World War II, it split. North Korea becomes communist, South Korea non-communist. Right? And then in 1953, communist North Korea says, hey, we were once one country. I'm going to invade the South and take it over and we're gonna have one united Korean peninsula again, but it'll all be communist. The United States is not gonna accept that. Why? Containment. Were we successful at containing communism here? Yeah, it was. Okay, no, we didn't, undo, we didn't force North Korea to become non-communist, but that's not what containment is. Right? Containment is recognizing that wherever communism is, we're gonna leave it alone basically but we're gonna stop it from spreading any further. Okay, so South Korea was never communist. Technically, believe it or not, the Korean War never officially ended with a peace treaty. All we have is a ceasefire since 1953. And we're gonna talk more about this tomorrow, but still, currently, there are 28,000 Americans who live in South Korea defending this border. In case one day Kim Jong-un goes crazy and starts invading South Korea, which he threatens to do all the time. Okay, so technically the war is not over, but South Korea, still non-communist. If you own anything that has the words Hyundai, Kia, LG, Samsung, that's where those things come from. Okay, one of our biggest trading partners, a very capitalist country. So containment, successful. Okay, the Korean War was a success. Okay, so Vietnam is a little bit trickier, but like the Korean War, when World War II was over, Vietnam was split, communist North, non-communist South. This particular guy, Ho Chi Minh, he decides he wants to reunite all Vietnam into one communist society, right? And if he's the person in charge and it's a communist country, right, he would have a lot of power if that's the case, right? Because in communism, the government owns and operates all the businesses. So when he decides he's going to invade South Vietnam and turn it communist, a couple of countries try to stop that. The first one is France. They fall flat on their faces, okay, still rebuilding from World War II. They were not able to withstand the Vietnamese onslaught from the north. So America steps in to stop the spread of communism. It was a really difficult situation because not only are you fighting the North Vietnamese who are communists, you also have a lot of people in South Vietnam who are communist sympathizers who did things to kind of undermine the American war effort. Why else was this war hard for Americans to win? Jungle terrain, okay, so we're far from home. We're not used to fighting a jungle-based war. And what kind of tactics did the Vietnamese use? Brie? Guerrilla tactics. Okay, really tough. You didn't know who was a soldier or a civilian. In the daytime, the soldiers were farming, and at nighttime, they picked up their rifles and started shooting at us. So it's like, uh, who, well, who's the enemy? I don't know what to do, right? I'm used to like a whole army in front of me, and now, uh, uh, I just shoot them. Okay, so we get kind of a bad rap because we, like, we think that some of these civilians might be soldiers, right? So we go into villages, we round up the men, and we, you know, shoot them sometimes or like to interrogate them. And, you know, it kind of gives us kind of a bad image. And that's why a lot of protests broke out in this country about the Vietnam War as well. So after 10 years, we decide this is not worth it anymore. And in 1974, we leave. 
what happens to Vietnam after America leaves? Was communism contained in Vietnam? It was not. Okay, Vietnam becomes a communist country in 1975, the entire thing, okay? Interesting though, is how much that country has changed since the Vietnam War. We might have gone through this. A lot of you guys are wearing sneakers right now. A lot of them are gonna say made in Vietnam. So even though they became a communist country, very quickly they realized that pure communism is a fail and they start to introduce some capitalism, okay? And Vietnam is one of our bigger trading partners right now, which is weird, right? To go from enemy war with the country for 10 years, now we get our Nikes there. How convenient, okay? So containment is not successful. How does it end? All of Vietnam becomes a communist country. Cuba is kind of an interesting story. There was a person in 1959 who led a communist uprising in Cuba. Who's the guy? You're going to have to recognize his name. Fidel Castro. For a lot of reasons that you'll get more into in 11th grade, but the U.S. and Cuba have kind of a, a history of conflict for like over 100 years. And Castro decides, much like Vladimir Lenin, if you remember him from Russia, he figures if he leads a communist government and has control over all the businesses, he could take power away from the United States. It's confusing, but the U.S. owned a lot of the businesses that operated in Cuba. And Castro's like, that's BS. So if I let a communist uprising and the government owns those businesses, he could take those profits and distribute them to the Cuban people. He might have had some good intentions, maybe also some sketchy intentions. But it does have a communist revolution. Freaks out America, right? Because we're all like, containment, containment, containment. And now it's a communist country 90 miles off the coast of Florida. So... This is kind of interesting. What did America do to try to turn Cuba back into a non-communist country? Bay of Pigs invasion, okay? What the Bay of Pigs invasion was, America rounded up a bunch of angry Cuban people. Because what happened was when communism had a, a revolution in Cuba, if you had wealth and land, you left Cuba and you settled in Florida. There's a reason why Florida has a very Cuban population. It goes back to this time period. Remind me again, guys, if you have money and wealth, why do you want to escape communism? Exactly, Emma, right? The government's gonna seize your wealth and redistribute it to other people, right? Whoever the government sees fit to obtain your wealth. So people with the means left Cuba and they settled in the United States. So the government here has an idea. We don't want to invade Cuba directly, the government says, because that's gonna maybe provoke the Soviet Union to get involved. So we're gonna round up all the Cuban people who are angry, give them machine guns, give them training very secretly. We're gonna have the CIA do this and then put them on a boat and bring them back to Cuba and tell them, okay, go take your country back. It didn't work out, okay? The Bay of Pigs invasion failed and Fidel Castro gets word that the CIA trained these people. He's pissed off at America. What does Fidel Castro start bringing into Cuba to make sure that America never messes with Cuba again? Nuclear missiles, okay? And using our spy planes, we find out about it they didn't complete the job yet, but we see them building the silos, these things underground that hold the nukes. That would be pretty scary, because from Cuba, even with the primitive stuff at the time, they could very easily reach New York, Boston, okay? So we freak out. We put a bunch of boats around Cuba. It's called a naval blockade, and we basically dare the Soviet Union. We say, listen, if you guys want to come finish the job and finish bringing these missiles into Cuba, you're going to have to shoot at our boats. So one of two things could have happened. They could have either shot at our boats and maybe provoke World War III and nuclear war, or the Soviet Union could just say, ooh, I'm scared, and go home. Luckily for us, they said, I'm scared, and they went home. Okay, because who knows what would have happened if they shot at us. Maybe none of us are sitting in this room right now because America doesn't exist, or the whole planet. All right, that was known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. Maybe you learned about that in eighth grade a little bit. Big picture stuff, though. Did we contain communism when it comes to Cuba? RJ says no, and he's right. Okay, we got the missiles out of Cuba. Okay, after that missile crisis, we decide, hey, maybe this whole like escalation of like fear is a bad idea. So they remove their missiles out of Cuba and we decide we're gonna take some of our nuclear missiles out of Turkey. That made the Russians kind of nervous. So that was a good thing. But no, Cuba became a communist country. It remained a communist country. It's still a communist country. And for a long time, we actually had a trade embargo in place against Cuba the type of sanction. You guys know what a trade embargo might mean? In this case, a trade embargo means you don't trade with the country at all. Okay, for a long time, Americans couldn't travel to Cuba. You couldn't buy stuff from Cuba. Cuban cigars were a very big luxury good that Americans could not obtain. Slowly starting to change now. Some American companies are doing business in Cuba, but still, it's very hard to visit. Soviet-Afghan war. Okay, when is this war fought? 
79 to 89, okay? That's 10 years, often called Soviet, the Soviet Union's like Vietnam because they were there for 10 years and they didn't really achieve their goals. So the two nations involved are the Soviet Union and Afghanistan, hopefully that's pretty clear. Why did the Soviet Union go to Afghanistan? Yeah, to protect the communist government that was there. Okay, Afghanistan had a communist revolution and a communist government was put in place, but a lot of people there were pissed off about it. They weren't happy about it. Particularly these people called the Mujahideen. They were really hardcore Muslims. So let's try to put that into context, right? Do you guys remember what the typical communist policy is regarding religious beliefs? No religion. Atheism is the official policy, right? Because they don't want you being loyal to a Jesus, a Moses, and Abraham, a Muhammad, and Allah. Where do they want all your, all, <laughs> all your loyalties? Eh? On the government and the government leader. Okay, so if you are really hardcore about your religion, and these people were, this is unacceptable. So they start fighting, they start a rebellion against the Soviet Union. If you like, like action movies, this is one of my favorites, the Rambo series with the guy who also plays Rocky Balboa. Rambo 3 is about this conflict. So there's these religious warriors who are going after the Soviet Union. And America's policy is you back people, no matter who they are, if they're going to help you stop the spread of communism. So we give these Islamic warriors training and weapons to fight the Soviet Union. Did it work? I'm seeing a little bit of both. Kathleen says, yes, I agree. All right, we were able to kick, well, they were able to kick the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan. Okay, it's kind of like, almost like the final nail in the coffin for the Soviet Union. They spent bajillions of dollars over the course of 10 years to fight this war and they lost. Okay, and Afghanistan, what they really wanted was to be this thing called a non-aligned nation. They didn't want to be part of the Soviet Union. They didn't want to be part of NATO. They wanted to do their own thing. So they were really unhappy with Soviet interference. If you fast forward to the 1990s, the, the effects of this kind of play out because some of those people that got American weapons and American trading formed this thing called the Taliban, which then took over Afghanistan, which then contributed to funding Al Qaeda, which then contributed to 9-11. So we'll talk, talk more about that later, but that's kind of the thing. Sometimes when you get involved in these conflicts, you might achieve your initial goal, but sometimes it's an un unintended side effect. And if you had that section, you saw this, okay? Some of those people that we gave support to ended up doing some really sketchy things in the future. Uh, but yes, communism was contained, all right? So before we leave today, and we will be able to finish this early, I want to do this task number two, and then we're gonna turn this thing in and relax. Okay, so by now it is probably apparent that the policy of containment has had its successes and failures. Rarely are policies complete successes or failures. Therefore, when evaluating what governments do, it is important to decide whether it was more of a success or more of a failure. Based on this lesson and your previous Cold War lessons, complete the following questions below using complete sentences. Let's do this together. What are the examples, either from this lesson or previously, that show us successfully stopping communism spread? The wars or policies. Sean, give me one. The Korean War. Korean War. Put that down for a success. Korean War. Where else did we stop communism? Meg? I was gonna say the Marshall Plan. Marshall Plan, yes, very good. Do you guys remember from yesterday or from when we talked about it last week, what part of the world did we help with the Marshall Plan? I'll give you a hint, Western or Eastern Europe? Western Europe, okay, Western Europe. Because Western Europe is the NATO countries. All right, never mind. disregard what I said. All right, so Western European countries get tons of US money to help them stop the spread of communism, and it worked. So Korean War, it worked. Marshall Plan, it worked. The British never became communists, neither did the French. Where else did it work that we just saw in this lesson? Yeah, Afghanistan, good. Okay, so no communism in Korea, South Korea. No communism in Western Europe, no communism in Afghanistan. Where do we see containment being a failure? Cuba. Right, we wanted it to be non-communist. We attempted some sort of a wacky invasion with Cuban refugees. It didn't work. Cuba remains communist. Jill? Vietnam. And Vietnam. All right, so just based on this example, or these examples, there are other places where America stopped the spread of communism. Most of them took place in like Latin American countries, like um, Guatemala and Nicaragua, and maybe we'll discuss those more another time. But just based on these, right, if I'm looking to evaluate whether or not it was a good plan 
if it achieved our goals, I'm going to look at which side has more things, more examples, right? I see one, two, three successes and two failures. So if you had to judge it one way or another, is it more of a success or more of a failure? I would say more of a success, okay? At least just based on this. So we're gonna kind of summarize that here. So take a look, okay. Why, why was this a success or a failure? Explain using at least three specific reasons from what you've learned about the ways in which the US has attempted to contain communism. Consider using some of these sentence frames below. So we're going to recreate these things down here just to practice some writing. All right, so here's a topic sentence. Although the US experienced some setbacks, the policy of containment was a success. This is almost like a thesis statement, right? Something we're gonna prove with the rest of this paragraph. So I'm gonna take this, you should do the same thing. Copy this down here as your first sentence. Okay, you're gonna copy mine word for word, put that down here, okay? For example, containment fails in places such as blank and blank. So let's copy that and put that down here. And then we fill in the blanks, right? We just did them. We're gonna put Cuba and Vietnam. So the next sentence here asks to explain it a little bit. In two to three sentences, summarize why containment failed in these places. So you tell me, give me a reason why the Vietnam War was a failure for us, based on what we just said before. Okay, All right, so if this was due, what does the sentence frame say? This was due to the fact that the jungle terrain in Vietnam and the guerrilla fighting the guerrilla style of war made it difficult for U.S. soldiers. So there's a reason right there for Vietnam. What contributed to the failure in Cuba? What happened there? Okay, in Cuba, the Bay of Pigs invasion failed to stop Fidel Castro from turning the country communist. All right, just quick little summaries here, explaining why there were failures, nothing too crazy. All right, so now we have to argue the other side. So this is the acknowledgement that not everything was all great with containment. Now we're going to explain the success stories. So back to the sentence frames. Despite these setbacks, containment was successful in blank and in blank. So I'm gonna put that right here. Give me two places where it was successful. Western Europe and Afghanistan works for me. Good, so now we're gonna explain these. In these cases, blank, in two to four sentences, explain what the US did to stop the spread of communism in these places and try to offer an explanation as to why it was successful. So let's do the first one. What did we do to stop the spread of communism in Western Europe? Money. We gave them money, okay, so very simple. In the case of Western Europe, the US provided economic aid to help those countries contain communism. And in Afghanistan, what did we do in Afghanistan that was successful? The US armed and trained holy warriors called the Mujahideen who fought against and defeated the Soviet Union. Just a nice quick little summary paragraph that proves, or rather argues, that containment was more of a success than a failure. Right? And if you were to look around the world today, right, a lot of the countries that were formerly communist have either abandoned communism, like the Soviet Union is no longer a country, and Putin behaves like a communist leader in a lot of ways, but it's a capitalist country for the most part. Uh, Vietnam has abandoned pure communism. They think it's not the greatest thing, so they've brought in some capitalism. So if you fast forward to right now, it seems like you know, the world has said that capitalism is the, the better way. Democracy is the better way.